you for joining us today and welcome to my sewing room. The theme of the show today is puffing. Puffing is also called gathering and a long time ago it was called ruching. Puffing is a great technique because it is so pretty and it's very inexpensive to use puffing and add lots of details to your clothing without putting any more money into your dress. Puffing can be as narrow or as wide as you want it to be. This beautiful little bodice has puffing that is no wider than about one half inch. The puffing also goes down into a V in the front and actually this is all the treatment that you would need on a dress to make it a beautiful one. This little dress could very easily be called French sewing on a budget. The puffing is across the collar and just very little trims are needed to trim the collar on this dress. This lovely christening dress, baptismal gown, blessing dress, or baby dedication dress has, is made out of netting. It has puffing made out of netting also. In between the layers with the little lace edging are strips of puffing. Puffing is not just for children's clothes or baby clothes. This beautiful velveteen dress features the heavy Clooney lace puffing made of linen and is an elegant look for a woman to wear for a very tailored occasion. This sweet little dress has puffing around the fancy band. As a matter of fact, the fancy band is puffing. Such a sweet little robin's egg blue Swiss Batiste dress. Once again, the skirt is featured with puffing. This puffing is very wide puffing on the fancy band of this dress. Oh, maybe about six inches wide. An elegant treatment for an unusual puffing strip. Oh my goodness, what sweet lace crisscrosses. What sweet little strips of puffing that embellish the dropped waist midi dress. This is very easy to do. Simply crisscross your lace, zigzag it down. This is one of my favorite dresses. It's an exact copy of a little antique dress and perhaps I could call this the puffing dress because you know why? Every bit of this dress is puffing. Entredeau, puffing, entredeau. The sleeves are entredeau, puffing, entredeau. The skirt has wider strips of puffing and truly this is the essence of heirloom sewing if one wants to copy the garments of yesteryear into something elegant to wear today. Lavender Swiss Batiste was the fabric I chose for this lovely round yoke puffing dress. Puffing strips fill this beautiful round yoke. Then on the fancy band, and do you remember I told you this, the name of the skirt fancy part was called a fancy band. There are two puffing strips and lots of lace. Now it is time for me to show you two very easy methods for making puffing. Puffing begins with a straight piece of fabric. It can be as narrow or as wide as you want it to be. Always remember you are the designer and that's a lot of the fun of sewing. The first method I have for you has two rows of gathering run all the way down the length of the puffing, two rows on one side, two rows on the other side, and then simply pull the bobbin threads, gather your puffing as tightly or as loosely as you want it to be gathered. It really is okay to have loose puffing or really, really tight puffing. Now how does this puffing get attached to the garment? Many times I use entredeau on either side of the puffing it needs to be stabilized some way. The trick for putting entredeau to puffing is to line up the edge of the seam allowance on the entredeau with the cut edge of the puffing. Then simply the technique straight edge entredeau to gathered puffing. Stitch in the ditch along the ditch of the puffing, trim it, go back and zigzag. Now here at the side where I have it zigzagged and this is what the puffing strip looks like after you open it up, after you have put entredeau on both sides of the puffing strip. There is another method that really is the easier method. If you have a gathering foot, 
for your sewing machine. This is the one I'm going to use in a few minutes. The gathering foot has a little slit in the middle and I simply slip the puffing underneath the gathering foot. I do not put the fabric in that little slit. That has another purpose. This is puffing made with the gathering foot to my sewing machine. Run the gathering foot down one side, run the gathering foot down the other side, and voila, your puffing is all ready. Puffing is lovely on clothes. It is also beautiful on a quilt. I will share with you our heirloom quilt square for the day. A lot of techniques would put a quilt square in the real showstopper category. I believe puffing is one of these techniques. This particular quilt square has two very beautiful strips of puffing gathered pretty full. This, this is interesting puffing because it's kind of squishy and really nice. Then there are three strips of lovely trims in the middle. Entredeau is in between each one of these strips, as you can see. What a beautiful quilt square that really shows up. Now, let's make some puffing. The first type of puffing I'm going to demonstrate for you is simply two rows of gathering threads on one side, two rows of gathering threads on the other, and I have my little sample here ready, and my uh, stitch length, by the way, it is a straight stitch, just a regular needle, a 70 or an 80 needle. My stitch length is 4.0, and I will stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch. By the way, it's kind of interesting to note, I wonder if you sew with your shoe off or with your shoe on. That is a cute thing I ask ladies as I teach around the country and really around the world. And every time I ask them if they are shoe off or shoe on sewers, we get about half and half. Now, I have run the two rows of gathering down this puffing strip and all I have to do then is pull the bobbin thread, and I've already pulled it rather than standing here and digging around for that bobbin thread. I've already pulled it on this sample, so I slip the puffing up and you can adjust it to any uh, fullness or not fullness that you want to. The rule of thumb on puffing as far as how full do I make it or not make it, remember, it's your puffing, you make it any way you want to, and that's the truth. But a three to one fullness is traditionally what I recommend on puffing. But remember, all rules are meant to be broken. That's the way I like to sew. If sewing isn't fun and if we can't break the rules, why in the world would we want to do it? Now, this little foot I have on now is the gathering foot. I'm going to run my strip of puffing underneath the gathering foot, and I'm going to move my fabric in just a little bit. Uh, in other words, I have about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this side. I don't run the gathering foot right over on the edge of the fabric. Now I'm going to take the stitch length down to about 3.5 on this case. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you two things. It is sometimes a good idea to hold the end of the strings as you begin to use a gathering foot. And it's always a good idea not to begin sewing on the very end of the strip. Okay, those are two little things I forgot to tell you. Now I'm going to puff and puff and puff and puff and gather right along. I have something else kind of cute to tell you. A lot of women are in the category that we're calling retread sewers. You know what retreads are? Retread sewers are those women who used to sew a lot and they haven't sewn in a long time and they've now come back to their sewing machines. All right, let me show you this beautiful side of the puffing that I have just made using this puffing strip. Now, come on all you retread sewers, if you're missing out on sewing, you need to get back to your sewing machines because we are having so much fun sewing these days. There were several number of years there where I didn't sew and I didn't realize how much fun I had been missing. Okay, going to go down the other side, going to puff again on the other side. By the way, you know what I ended up doing? I ended up taking this down to a 3.0 because the fabric I'm working on is Swiss Batiste and I puff real slowly going down the second side for obvious reasons. You have to hang on to this crazy thing. Do you see that beautiful puffing that's coming out? I just love this. I love to do puffing with a gathering foot because it is so quick and easy. Now, you just look here. Do you see that puffing? I did not have to scrunch it or pull it or hunt for the bobbin threads to gather it. I simply ran it through down one side and then I turned it and ran it back down the other way and I'm not really sure that is necessary, but it seems to me to be a little bit easier. 
and I came out with a beautiful piece of puffing. Now you can take your gathering length, your straight stitch length rather, up to as high as four, or you might on some fabrics, really lightweight fabrics, have to take it down to 2.5. But I really like the gathering, how much gathering I have here on this particular strip at 3.0. Do you see how beautiful that puffing is? Let me show you another feature of the gathering foot puffing. It doesn't slip. When you put it in there, it's there. All right, now look, see how this side, the puffs don't slip up and down. They stay where they're supposed to be. They don't slip, they don't slip and slide. And in order to make this perfectly straight, I will simply hold it, and it is perfectly straight, but I'll hold it and pull it a little bit. Actually, I kind of like to play with puffing because I think it's a really neat trick. When you're going to make a long puffing strip, I have a puffing strip over here that's a little bit wider that I have gathered with my gathering foot on my sewing machine. And I wanted to show you a little trick here. You'll have to put several strips together because actually puffing does take up a lot of fabric. And in this case, here is the place where my seam is joined, where these strips are joined rather, and all I do is just serge it. As a matter of fact, we have a whole show for you a little bit later on in the series called French Sewing by Serger. And this is one of the beautiful places to use a serger when you join your strips together before you puff. Now, do you have to use a serger? Goodness, no. You can simply stitch it and pink it, or you can put a French seam there. It's just that the serger is so easy when I'm joining strips of puffing together. Well, you've seen how to make two different kinds of puffing. You see how easy it is, especially if you have a gathering foot on your sewing machine. And, or you can do it where you just run the strips in and you gather it the old-fashioned way. All right, I'm going to go over to my magic teaching boards and I'm going to show you a puffing blouse that I think is very beautiful and how you translate all of this stuff into a lovely, elegant blouse for a lady. The basic blouse I'm using is a button up the back, plain front, jewel neckline blouse. This is very nice because it's very tailored and it can go under a business suit or you could wear it with a velveteen skirt or a taffeta skirt and go to the fanciest occasion you would like to go. Here is the blouse after I did all of the sewing with the puffing strips in the middle and by the way puffing strips and laces that run up and down are very slenderizing and this blouse is very elegant with its lace entredeau and puffing strips. Okay, how did I get all of this stuff onto the front of this blouse? Well, let me show you. I start with fabric, entredeau, laces. Here is the strip that I gathered for puffing later on. Then all of the center pieces, you zigzag them together or entredeau to laced, entredeau to puffed fabric, gathered fabric. Here is the puffing strip made with the gathering foot on the sewing machine and then repeated on the other side. So I put all of this together using one, one strip at a time, using the different techniques that we've had so far. And after the whole bodice is put together, in other words, you create another piece of fabric by putting all of these things together. After it is all created, then I put it all together and I cut out the blouse bodice from this newly created piece of fabric. Puffing is not only beautiful in ladies' and children's clothes, it is really pretty in pillows for your bedroom. This little puffing pillow is absolutely one of my very favorites. I call it the puffing boudoir pillow, but you know what? I think this pillow has been used more for little ring bearers to carry the rings on in weddings than anything else. Now be sure on your, the middle of your puffing, if you're going to use this for a ring bearer pillow, that you A, you do not use the real rings for the wedding, and B, that you stitch it or else tie it down. That would not be really cute if all the rings got lost in the wedding. Okay, little strips of lace on either side, little pin tucks, very easy closing in the back, simply a little envelope closing. This is the little silk robin's egg blue. I also have to show you a really sweet pillow, ecru on ecru, and I might suggest that for a, a gift to be given to someone that you do not know, the colors in his or her bedroom or wherever they're going to use it, I might suggest that white or ecru is always appropriate. Another sweet little puffing pillow, very easy to make. 
If I am going to have a pillow of this type for a larger bed, say a king size or a queen size bed, I might go ahead and just extend it. So extending this pillow is very easy. I simply put more rows of lace, entredeau, pin tucks, and, and you can even put a couple uh, more rows of puffing in here if you would like. Don't forget, you can do anything you want to because it's your pillow. This pillow is so easy to make. Let me refresh your memory one time, please on the two different types of puffing. If you do not have a gathering foot, it is very easy just to run two rows of gathering stitches in the side of your puffing strip. If you do have a gathering foot, it is very easy to just simply run the gathering foot down one side, run the gathering foot down the other side, and your puffing does not have to be distributed at all. It's already finished. Then, in making any of these puffing pillow strips, pillows, it's really easy when you make a long strip and cut it in two. For instance, I have two strips of pin tucks on all of these pillows, so I made a long strip and simply cut it in two, and therefore I didn't have to worry about matching up two strips. I did the same thing for my lace and entredeau strips. I simply made one long piece and then cut it in two, and then I had both of my strips. One more little trick let me show you, and we will have a whole s a program devoted to French sewing by serger a little bit later on, but it's very, very easy to use your serger anytime you're serging together ruffle strips, such as the little ruffle strips on this pillow, or ruffle strips to go around the bottom of a little girl's dress, or wherever you're going to use a ruffle. Anyway, use the serger wherever you can. To continue our puffing idea, we have the sweetest doll dress for you, and even she has a little puffing on her dress. This beautiful little ecru Swiss Batiste doll dress with this sweet little blue silk ribbons and blue shadow work embroidery, I believe would be just as beautiful on your daughter or your granddaughter as it is on this doll. I love the blue-eyed blonde blondes wearing ecru and pale blue. It really does seem to pick up the coloring. I would like to share one more little tip with you that I've learned working with mothers and grandmothers who are having the joy of dressing their children and of course their dolls. Please do, if your little girl or your little granddaughter loves purple or green or pink or whatever, please do make her purple or green or pink dresses. These are love clothes and it will make her happy and I think she will remember the dresses with such joy, especially if you make them the color that she wants. This little dress is very easy to make. It has machine gathered puffing right here on the skirt, a little ruffle out of a little Swiss edging, and the little Swiss trim is very interesting. It has entredeau on both sides, entredeau at the top, entredeau at the bottom. Therefore, when I sew it, I will treat it on this side as entredeau to flat fabric, this side to the puffing as entredeau to gathered fabric. On the bodice of this little dress are two little sweet blue shadow work bows, another very easy type of embroidery, and a little strip of puffing and a little gathering around her neckline. Come on over to the boards. I'd like to show you one more little trick on cutting fabric away from behind the uh, Swiss embroidery also. Here is the little skirt put together in a little piece with the entredeau trimmed Swiss embroidery, the puffing, more entredeau trimmed Swiss embroidery, and a ruffle. After I sewed all of the goodies together and the puffing strip, you can see the puffing had this little seam allowance and the ruffle that came right behind this entredeau strip. After you do, stitch in the ditch, trim and zigzag, or else you can serge this. You simply go in, well, if you serge it, it will cut it off for you, but if you do stitch in the ditch, trim and zigzag, you will need to come in and trim away the excess part of the ruffle, if you will. What a sweet little look for a little doll to have a dress, and this would be just as pretty, on a child's dress, on a petticoat, or on something for yourself. You know what, without the ruffles, look here, without the ruffle, that would make a beautiful panel to go up and down the front of a lady's blouse. All of the different pieces are put together. Here they go, let's start at the bottom. A ruffle, and by the way, I use the gathering foot to gather this ruffle too. You wanna know a secret? I use the gathering foot everywhere I can. To finish your dresses completely, I have a special craft for you, special covered buttons. When 
when I was a little girl, my mother covered lots of buttons to put on the dresses she made me. I think this button is absolutely beautiful on this beautiful robe. It has handmade embroidery and you use a button kit from, a covered button kit from the fabric store. Let me give you some really neat ideas, I think. There is a real trend now toward buying button covers that you can slip over the buttons on a store-bought blouse. Look here how you can decorate one of those. Put, well, I'm just dropping everything on. I put the handmade silk ribbons and just simply hot glue gun them on. This little button is really interesting, I think. It started with a piece of Thai silk with a little bit of lace put over it. Cut out your circle and follow the directions on the kit. These two little buttons are very sweet. They both have silk ribbon embroidery done on linen. This is another sweet little button. There is a piece of Thai silk, and this little trim, which comes from Switzerland, has little leaves. Simply cut those little leaves apart and glue one little leaf on the Thai silk button. The last little example I have to show you, I think is very interesting too. It is a piece, once again, of the silk fabric, and it has a little bit of the Swiss trim right on the top of it, and makes a very interesting effect well, on a dress that has some of this trim on it. Here is another idea where you can get very quick embroidery to go on your buttons. Purchase handkerchiefs, new ones or antique ones. Do you see the lovely embroidery that could be used? This is a sweet one. It's Petty Point. I would like to invite you now to come to my attic and look at some beautiful garments that I have in my grandmother's trunk. Welcome to my attic, and do I really have some beautiful things for you today? Well, the answer is yes. This little dress is made out of a heavier fabric. This would not have been a christening dress because the fabric is too heavy. The little bodice is absolutely precious. It's made with Swiss eyelets. By the way, the first Swiss eyelets came out of Switzerland uh, in the late 1850s, I believe the date was 1857. So if you see Swiss trim on a really old dress, don't, be, don't think it was maybe made by hand if it looks as if it were made by machine because they've been around about 150 years. The little puffing on this dress, I think it's really sweet. It goes from the bottom of the yoke down to the little Swiss eyelet that's used for the waistband. This is a wide puffing. I think the skirt on this dress is really sweet. It has lots of folded tucks and a pretty little Swiss eyelet border. This little blouse is a fun blouse. It is so tiny, I can't imagine what tiny little lady wore it. It has tucks on the front, and maybe I could call this my ultimate puffing blouse. Have you ever seen so much puffing on one sleeve in your life? And it's, kind, it's sort of unusual puffing, too. A very unique piece, I think. I cannot wait to show you the details on this little puffing christening dress. It is all made by hand, and it is the princess line. This line of christening dress was very uh, prominent around the turn of the century. Little hand puff strips, little Swiss strips, hand puff strips, and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the dress, making a beautiful detail. The little dress also ties in the back. This way, the children could wear it longer or shorter lengths of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope to see you next time in my sewing room.